Okay, good morning and or good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us. And welcome to what is the first of what is intended to be a series of web tutorials uh, for uh, Sensible Toolkit and the QuickLogic Quick Feather Board. Uh, my name is Chris Rogers. I'm CEO of Sensible, and I welcome you all here to today's session. Uh, we will be going over uh, the topic today is the uh, addition of sensors to the Quick Feather Board. Uh, we'll be showcasing how to connect uh, arbitrary new sensors uh, in addition to the ones that exist on the Quick Feather Board themselves uh, using an I squared C interface uh, to successfully connect to the board and capture data within the Sensible Data Capture Lab tool. Uh, Next week's topic, uh, same time, uh, 8 a.m. Pacific uh, next Wednesday, we'll go over uh, the use of TensorFlow and the creation of hybrid models using Sensible segmentation, uh, feature selection, and TensorFlow Lite as a classifier. Uh, so be sure to join us next week if that topic is of interest to you and in understanding how to build hybrid neural network models uh, with the Sensible Toolkit. Um, a couple of points of order before we get started with today's session. Um, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, there's a Q&A button. Feel free to submit your questions uh, throughout the course of the tutorial session itself. Uh, we'll hold these off until the end of the session, and then we'll make sure to reserve time to go over those at the end. Uh, another point is that this, this session is being recorded and will be made available afterwards so that uh, given the detail of the content we're going through, I'm sure many will find value in going back and refreshing um, particular points in the process. Uh, the final point is, is that given the nature of this, there may be questions that uh, come to mind or, or points of clarification where you wish to jump in and just you know, raise your hand for a clarification that might be difficult to to go over you know, at the end of the session. So for that purpose, uh, if you use the raise hand uh, icon at the bottom of the screen, uh, then that'll indicate uh, you, that uh, you have a point of clarification. Uh, so generally, if your question is of uh, a generic nature or can be answered at the end, we ask that you uh, would cover it then. But uh, if you need to, by all means, uh, use the raise hand feature and we'll interrupt uh, to clarify. So with that, I will introduce our first speaker for today's session. Murthy Badula is an engineer at uh, QuickLogic uh, on the hardware side, and will walk us through the use of the Quick Feather uh, to integrate, uh, in this case, a, uh, a Wheatstone bridge or load cell sensor uh, using I squared C. Again, the concepts here being presented are general in nature. So uh, while this may not be the particular sensor type you're interested in, the concepts hold nonetheless. So uh, use this as your example, and uh, we'll let Murthy take it away from here. Uh, Murthy, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, hello, all. Welcome to the uh, demo demonstration on um, how to connect a new I2C sensor to the Quick Feather development board and capture data using the SenseML Data Capture Lab. I assume you have some familiarity with the Quick Feather development board and the SenseML uh, tools. So, in this today's demo demonstration, we'll be uh, quickly going over how to use the Quick Feather uh, onboard um, accelerometer sensor to capture data. And then we will uh, look at a specific example, how to connect a, a quick scale uh, uh, sensor to measure weights and collect the data. So first we'll review the hardware connections, how to set up the, uh, how to connect the new I2C sensor to the quick feather board. In this particular case, we will be uh, using the Spark Fun NAU7802 module to uh, read the data. And we'll be using a Jarla off the shelf uh, kitchen scale, uh, which contains a load cell, load, load cell sensor 
for measuring the weight of the uh, object put on the scale. So here are some useful links. So uh, uh, this ParkFun website provides a uh, useful hookup guide on how to uh, uh, connect the NAU7802 module to the kitchen scale. And for the software, we'll be using the Quark SDK. Uh, and the Quark SDK has several example projects. So we'll be using the simple steaming project to uh, uh, read the data and connect to the data capture lab. So today we'll be uh, going in first reviewing the uh, onboard accelerometer sensor and stream data to the data capture lab, DCL for short. Next, we'll review how to update the project to modify it so that uh, we will read the NAU7802 sensor data instead of the onboard accelerometer sensor data. So for DCL, we will need to specify the new sensor type, so we will go over how to update the SSF file, which is in JSON format, to uh, indicate to DCL the new sensor type. And we'll also review how to collect the new sensor data using the DCL. So with that, so here uh, is a quick overview on the hardware connections and setup. So this is the quick feather board. Uh, so, and so we have the I2C sensor on the right side here. So for the quick feather board, so uh, we have the USB connector for uh, providing the power. And in addition, uh, we'll be using a, a UART that is connected to the uh, PC for talking to the DCL. So first, let's uh, quickly uh, go over the simple streaming interface uh, project and some high level uh, building blocks that are part of the this project. So, so the quick feather contains uh, the QuickLogix EOS S3 device. On, on this device, so we, we have the Quark SDK running. The Quark SDK contains several uh, low-level drivers, UART driver, I2C driver, and additionally, it has a data management to uh, get the uh, data from the sensors and then feed it to different tasks. So the Quark SDK, in addition, in addition to the I2C driver, simple I2C driver, it provides a wire interface so that a, an off the shipment, any uh, new I2C sensor that, that has an Arduino library can be easily integrated with this Quark SDK project. And finally, on the uh, development PC, desktop, we have the data capture lab, which is used for collecting the data. Now let's review the, uh, how to connect the quick scale to the uh, quick feather board. So here this spark fund has tutorial on how to uh, connect the NAU7802 module with a uh, kitchen scale that contains a load cell sensor. The load cell sensor 
measures the weight of the object. And the NAU 7802, it retrieves the data and reads it and sends it over the I2C. So this guide provides details on how to uh, hook up these two. Once this setup is ready, we are now ready to connect this to the Quick Feather board. On the Quick Feather board, like we have seen, so we have uh, uh, so connect the I to C signals and the power signals to the NA7802 board. So the pinout is is also given uh, on the Squark SDK project. And the, inside this uh, simple streaming application project. So the pinout is here. If the diagram is not uh, detailed enough. So that completes the uh, hardware setup. Now we are ready for uh, building the Quark SDK project and then flashing it to the board to start collecting data. So I'll be using an Eclipse project on a Windows machine, but the Quark SDK can be uh, Since, since the build files are all like uh, use the GCC toolchain, so this this can be developed on L Linux as well. Uh, in this case, I'll be using uh, an Eclipse project to, uh, to uh, create an Eclipse project. So the Quark SDK uh, has a tutorial on how to convert an existing make file uh, that is provided as part of the Quark SDK example projects, how to convert it to an Eclipse uh, project. So the first thing uh, you want to do is clone this Quark SDK project to the local uh, disk. So you can use your favorite git tool to clone the project. So here in this case, I have the project already cloned uh, for in here in the Quark SDK Axel folder. So we'll be using that. that. And when, uh, so this Quark SDK project, it has several sub modules. So in our case, we will need the submodules, tiny FPGA programmer for flashing the device. And we'll also use the S3 gateway. So when you clone the project, make sure all the submodules are cloned as well. So now, uh, as I talked about, so uh, we have the sensor driver. It's uh, all the sensor driver related code is inside this uh, source file, sensor underscore SSSS.cpp. So all the necessary modifications for the new sensor will be done inside this source file. And the Arduino, uh, the wire interface is provided as part of this wire.cpp source file which in turn uses the low level uh, I2C driver. Now let's build this project. So this, the default project uh, uses the onboard uh, accelerometer sensor for reading the data. So in this case, the sensor driver uh, to make things simpler, uh, it uses uh, a simple uh, 
free our task software timer to start reading the sensor data. The default uses a 10 millisecond timer, which translates to a 100 hertz sampling rate. So now the project is built and ready. So we have the binary available in this in the uh, in this folder. So to flash the uh, binary to the device, we'll be using the tiny FPGA programmer, which is a sub module that we have cloned earlier. to flash it to the device. So the uh, code is already flashed to the device. So I'll skip this step here. Now, once, once the uh, binary is flashed to the device, now we are ready to connect to the data capture lab and collect the data. So launch the uh, data capture lab. Now the first thing we want to do is import the plugin, device plugin. If it is not already important. So the device plugin is, uh, is already provided as part of the Quark SDK in the SSI app project. So import this. Let me make sure it's not already imported. Okay, it's already imported. That's why it's getting a problem. So let me delete and re-import. So in this case, we are using a simple streaming interface. So the simple streaming interface, uh, it's a very uh, uh, simple protocol, which where the device transmits say uh, the sensor configuration string until the, until the data capture lab sends a connect string. So once the connect string is, uh, uh, is seen by the device, the device then switches over to transmitting the sensor data. So we have the device plugin imported. Now we are ready to uh, start uh, uh, configuring a new sensor and collect the data. So add a new sensor configuration. So we're using the uh, simple stream plugin. So select the simple stream plugin. We will review the SSF format and then how to uh, create your own device plugin when, when we get to the weight scale sensor. So uh, we're using this simple stream plugin and we are using the onboard uh, accelerometer or motion sensor to capture the data. And our default uh, project uses 100 Hertz. So select uh, sampling rate as 100 Hertz and select the sensor accelerometer. So you can give a name to your new sensor configuration. Since we're using an accelerometer at 100 hertz, I'm, I'm just giving it a name, Axel 100 hertz. Now, before you can start uh, recording the data, uh, a label needs to be provided for the data that you are capturing. So give a label. Select the label. And now we are ready to connect to the device. And so I have two devices here. So I'll be uh, selecting the 
accelerometer, uh, the de device that streams the accelerometer. Okay, so looks like we have a problem with uh, the connection. So in case you run into trouble, so we can check what's happening using a teratum. Connect. So yeah, this is the, the device keeps sending this JSON string until it sees a connect. Uh, string. So let's try again connecting to the device. Justin, do you have the? Um, make sure I have it. Okay, so on the terminal, we can send a connect string. No, this is not working too. Let me reset and try again. Sending a correct string. No. Okay, try again. Hey, Murthy, why don't we move on to the next part and then come back to this? In okay, bit? yeah. So anyway, so once you have the data streaming, uh, so you can uh, begin recording and capture the data to a uh, comma-separated file. And the data will be stored in a uh, CSV file, CSV format, which can be later looked at for further analysis. Now let's move on to the uh, Adapt, updating the project to a weight scale sensor. So here we'll be modifying this sensor driver to, to replace the accelerometer uh, readings with the our new I2C sensor. So first thing is uh, the quick scale comes with an Arduino library. So we'll, we'll download that Arduino library and the Arduino library has some, in this case has some missing functions. So we'll be providing those missing functions. Now we are ready to 
integrate with the quark SDK. So next we will review how to configure the uh, new sensor by updating this sensor underscore SSS underscore configure function. Then we will need, we will need to read the samples from the new sensor and that is done by updating the function sensor underscore SSS underscore acquisition buffer ready function in this in the same source file sensor driver source file. For the new sensor, we need to specify the sensor configuration, which is done by updating the variable, this variable in the uh, in the source file. Now, in case of accelerometer, we have uh, three components, X, Y, Z components. So, so for each sample, we'll be sending three sets of data. In our weight scale case, we have only one channel per sample. So we'll be updating to indicate that. So first let's go ahead and download the Arduino library. So the Arduino library, is, uh, Spark Fun provides the Arduino library for the quick scale and they use on a zero to module. So download it to your local disk. It's downloaded. So from this library, we'll be needing the source files. So the examples, We'll be needing these two source files for integration with our Quark SDK. So put them in the Quark SDK project inside the simple streaming of application. So here I have the source files copied. So now we are ready to make the rest of the changes to the project. Let's review the changes needed for adapting to this new sensor. So now if we look at the Arduino library provided by the quick scale, so it has dependency on two header files, Arduino.h and wire.h. So the Quark SDK does not provide the Arduino.h. So we'll, we'll be, we will need to supply the missing functions uh, that are part of this Arduino, .head, Arduino header file. And the wire interface we is already provided by the, uh, the Quark SDK project. So in this case, we have the missing functions are the delay function and the millis function. So the delay function simply blocks the CPU for the indicated amount of time. So for this, we will be using the Quark SDK HAL driver, timer driver to provide the necessary delay that the application asks for. And the millis function, it, it needs to return the number of milliseconds that have elapsed. For this, we will be using the free RTOS get tick count API to, re to retrieve the number of milliseconds that have elapsed and return it to the calling function. So these are the necessary header files 
for using these two APIs. Now, since this is a C++ source file, so we indicate that using it's, uh, whereas the HAL delay microsecond is a C function, so we indicate that using it's an external C function. So now the changes to the uh, Arduino library are complete. Now we're ready to modify our sensor driver. So indicate that we'll be uh, using this park fun uh, functions. Provide an instance of the uh, NAU7802. And now for the JSON string, update the JSON string to indicate that uh, we'll be sending a weight data. So the driver, uh, the default for the default setting, the driver sends data every 20 milliseconds to the data capture lab. And we are reading samples every 10 milliseconds. So we have two samples ready every 20 milliseconds. So that is indicated in these samples per packet. And for the CSV, we indicate that the column location contains weight. Now we're ready to configure the sensor. So in, in this sensor configure function, replace the accelerometer configuration with our scale configuration. So the begin initializes the device and calibrates the device, the sensor device. And we need to indicate the sampling rate that we want the device to run at. So that is done by setting the sample sampling rate for the device. So this completes the configuration, initialization and configuration of the device. Now we are ready to update uh, the sensor reading. So this function buffer acquisition buffer ready, this gets called every 10 milliseconds, which is specified in the sensor.h. So replace the calls with reading the accelerometer with reading the sensor data. So this is the instance of the quick scale and the get reading API reads the reads a new sample. So in this case, quick, quick scale uh, has a 24 bit resolution but the data capture lab only requires 16 bits of data. So we'll be adjusting by eight bits to only write the 16 bits of data to the data box. So these complete the changes to the source file. Now, as I mentioned earlier, so we have the, uh, we need all, we also need to update the number of channels for the weight scale. We are only using one, one, one sample, one, one channel per sample. So update the number of channels here from three to one. So those complete the changes necessary for updating to a new I2C sensor. Now we are ready to build the project 
and flash it to the device. So the binary is ready. So similar to earlier, use the tiny FPGA programmer to flash the binary to the board. In this case, I have the binary already flashed to the device. So I'll be skipping this step. Now we're ready to connect to the DCL. Before connecting to the DCL, we have to uh, add a new sensor configuration. So let's see how to uh, say so in case, so in, in this case, we have the uh, uh, weight scale sensor already part of the DCL, but in case for, if you are using a new sensor type, then uh, you the device plugin SSF file needs to be update, needs to be updated to indicate the new sensor type for the DCL. So the URL here gives instructions on how to update the SSF file and the details of the SSF file format, how to import the new plugin to the DCL. So the SSF file format is given here. So for our case, we'll be using simple streaming. So the only changes that are needed are to indicate the new capture source type and the columns and the sampling rate. So let's look at how to modify the SSF file. So the Quark SDK provides a, uh, this default uh, import file. So we can edit this file to indicate the new sensor type for the DCL. So in our case, we, we might want to add a new capture source. So for example, we, we want to add a new pressure sensor. So the pressure sensor is very similar to the uh, scale sensor. So we can take this portion and replicate to create a new pressure sensor. Yes, any question? Uh, I see Ganesh. So what is the question? Hey, Karen, did we have a, a, a hand raised? I think Ganesh has raised a hand. I don't know if we can unmute uh, Ganesh. Um, 
Yeah, Ganesh, I think you need to unmute yourself to ask the question. Uh, uh, sorry, that was an un, uh, inadvertent uh, raise of hand because I was clicking so many uh, windows. I'm sorry for that. Okay, no problem. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, to uh, modify this uh, scale sensor to a pressure sensor, so just copy the sec relevant section and update the relevant fields. And that would create a uh, new sensor type that the DCL can uh, start using. So the, the, yeah, the part number can be anything. So now we are ready to import this into the DCL. So to import that, we will need to delete the existing plugin and import the new SSF file that we just made. So delete the device plugin. and importing new DCL, new SSF file that we just created. So for this project, we are using simple streaming interface. Now, when we add a new new sensor, we can see the, we'll be able to uh, see the new capture source, pressure source, pressure sensor source with the data that we have indicated in the SSF file. It has a sampling date and then the sensor type as pressure. So in our case, we are using uh, the quick scale 100 hertz, so let's go ahead and select those to create the new sensor type, new sensor configuration. And similar to earlier, create a new label for the data that you'll be capturing. and scan for the device and connect to the device. So now we're ready to begin recording. Once you're satisfied, you can stop the recording. And so which will be saved in a uh, comma separated file, which can be looked at later for further analysis by the DCL and other rest of the SenseML tools. So the various web links are here and so that completes our uh, today's uh, demonstration on how to add a new I2C sensor to the Quick Feather board and update the Quark SDK project to use the new sensor type. So with that, I turn it over to Chris. Great, thanks, Marthy. <clears throat> so yeah, as I said before, this is sort of the general process. Uh, it applies to this particular NAU 7802, but it can also apply to other I squared C sensors. Uh, the quick interface is a, a nice way to, uh, to uh, you know, easily connect. Uh, we support the quick sensors that are available in the uh, SparkFun uh, catalog. 
But uh, beyond that, I guess we've been answering a, a number of questions online, which is great. So we've been able to field a number of those. But uh, at this point, I think we have turned it over uh, to live questions. Uh, we had a few, I believe, that are still open that we can address. Uh, <clears throat> and, and so let me go through, and there's a couple here. Uh, uh, Chris Glenn asks, if uh, myself and a partner are both getting uh, free hardware, uh, can we make just one submission or uh, is it required that we provide two submissions, project submissions? Um, Andrea, I don't know if you're online, if you, you know the official rules, but I believe that's perfectly fine, right? It, it's certainly up to uh, participants if you know, uh, collaboration is assumed to be part of uh, <clears throat> project activities. Uh, and if uh, you know, two of the registered participants are working on the uh, same or very similar projects. Uh, yeah, that is uh, Chris and uh, Chris Wen. Yes, that is correct. As long as your team is no more than five members per entry. Okay. Um, so hopefully that clarifies that. <clears throat> uh, let's see, some of the other remain. Can, we have one, uh, can you record multiple data streams at a time, pressure, temperature, and sound, for example? Uh, the, the answer to that is yes. Uh, maybe Justin can elaborate on that. So uh, one of the highlighted boards that we wanted to call out was there's an A to D board called the ADS 1015 that provides four channel input, uh, four channel A to D at 12 bit. Uh, so that's one option if those are analog source sensors, but uh, then uh, beyond that, I guess, Justin, maybe you can elaborate. Yeah, the one caveat to that is that um, sample rates have to match, so you would be kind of vastly oversampling pressure and temperature, or you create two projects and they can then be combined later um, using Sensimal's Python interface to uh, build a model, a combined model. Um, but yeah, either oversampling or combining the projects in Sensible um, would let you capture them. OK. Um, I skipped over one because I uh, missed it. Uh, the question from Timothy is, can I connect and program the quick feather and use Sensible using a VM on Oracle Box? VM box. Uh, I know we support some VMs. Have we tested uh, the, the VM box, Justin? Uh, personally, I'm not sure on that particular product if that VM works. Uh, yeah, I, this is, yeah, this is Anthony. I, I think from the software point of view, it's okay, but the device driver may not recognize the board uh, with virtual machine right now. Um, yeah, I had that problem with VMware virtual machines, but not VirtualBox that I can remember. Um, yeah, we, we test them with VirtualBox as well. And and the IP is not recognized by the, the VirtualBox uh, driver. So you may have issues there. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, so Raymond reports that he's still waiting on his free hardware, seems to be stuck in transit. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that's happening, Raymond. I think we can follow up. And uh, uh, if you send a, an email to the uh, uh, Greek Logic uh, email, or you can send it to info at sensible.com. Uh, either way, then uh, we can pursue that with the uh, logistics team that's handling the shipments. So we'll see if we can't rectify that. Uh, I think a related question, are the hardware winners yet to receive their kit? How can we get an update? Uh, so a similar question, if you haven't received it, uh, I know it takes some time for uh, this uh, these kits to get shipped, particularly if they're going... Uh, uh, out of the U.S. So uh, you send us an email and we'll investigate uh, case by case what may be the holdup for your particular board. Uh, those have been going out weekly. So <clears throat> um, 
Let's see, I've, I see there's an SSF documentation for connecting Bluetooth, but I haven't been able to progress on that. Do you have a real working demo to show or share? Um, we don't right now. Um, that is something that can be worked on uh, for data capture lab. Okay. Yeah, we, we had the, we worked on the Wi Fi demo with ESP32 better. Um, All right, so that, that's something we may be able to follow up with um, and look into. Will there be a webinar on FPGA setup and programming? Uh, it, at this point, we don't have anything set up uh, on that. Uh, like I mentioned, the next topic is tutorial on uh, TensorFlow, uh, but that's something that uh, we could consider for a future update. So stay tuned. We'll see if we can not uh, organize that if there's sufficient interest from the community. Uh, to cover the FPGA topic. Is it possible to get a full version of Sensible for our contest folks? Uh, so the, the version uh, that's provided uh, is the uh, community edition. Uh, there are most of the features uh, within the toolkit are available. Uh, there's some uh, specific exceptions around uh, full source code and uh, I think extremely high data rates for some of the industrial type applications. Uh, it, if you have some particular constraints where you're running into uh, limitations, uh, let us know. Uh, send an email to the info at sensimal.com and, uh, and we'll follow up with you specifically on uh, how we could resolve that problem. My quick feather board came with a dead uh, US user button on arrival. Uh, Soldered an arcade. Oh, okay, I okay, guess so that's just a comment. <laughs> All right, I'm glad to see that you found a way around that. Uh, how about a webinar sample project using the onboard audio sensor? Uh, that might be something we could do uh, in the future. So we'll, we'll take that under advisement, see. Uh, as we look at our schedule beyond uh, next week's session uh, with additional topics to cover. So thanks for that uh, suggestion. We'll capture that. Uh, then the last one I have here on the online is also is, is SparkFun quick feathering, having multiple I squared C port for connecting multiple sensors to quick feather. Uh, Anthony or uh, Murthy, do we know that? Maybe Anthony, can we connect multiple? Yeah, so the, the feather um, the feather and feather wing only have two IO specified for uh, I squared C. So I imagine that you can connect up to about four I squared C devices to the same signals. Uh, for future um, with there may be a board with a quick connector that there you can use a quick expansion and then connect to multiple sensors. But at this point, um, you probably have to do blue wiring uh, for multiple sensors because there's only two pins available. Unless you wire them to a quick expansion board and that will allow you to connect to multiple sensors using connectors. Okay, great. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, you know, then a comment also on future topics uh, on how to uh, covering how to use the Espresso ESP32 uh, for Wi-Fi. Uh, I think that's one that we've had a lot of interest in, so uh, that's one that we're likely uh, to to put in the near term. So stay tuned. Well, uh, we're uh, working on our updated uh, calendar beyond next week. So. With that, let me make a plug for next week's session. Uh, I think we had quite a bit of interest in uh, the integration of TensorFlow light models for neural nets. And uh, we'll be uh, hosting a session at this same time next week uh, with Chris Morawski, our CTO, uh, leading that session to walk through an example of building a model using TensorFlow light. And uh, so you can register at this link here. Uh, you can also go to the Sensimal website, or I believe this is also on the 
uh, Quick Logic website as well. Uh, the, the same mechanism that you found uh, today's session, uh, we'll be posting updates with this follow-up session for next week. So uh, with that, uh, unless there are any other questions, I thank you all for your time and hope this was a benefit and that you gained some uh, insight into how to connect sensors to your boards. Uh, like I said, we will be uh, publishing the recorded version of this uh, so that you can go back and review. And uh, again, thank you for your time and uh, have a good day. Chris, I do have one more plug. Uh, we do have a forum link. So, uh, you know, to all of the attendees, if you have questions, uh, please go to the forum and post your questions there. Uh, definitely, we will follow up and then uh, provide answers. Great. Oh, and that's also a good point. So uh, for particular questions related to the Sensimal AI toolkit, uh, we would also encourage you to go to sensimal.com uh, slash support. And there's a ticket submission form there. Uh, that's probably the best way to get timely response back. Uh, you know, we can certainly vector emails. Uh, they come through the info and uh, the Hackster uh, uh, forums uh, for those users. But uh, the best way to get response timely would be to go to that uh, ticket submission page. Again, it's sensible.com slash support, and then you'll see uh, as you scroll down the page to uh, submit a ticket form. So, um, okay. So again, thanks for your time. And we'll hope to see you in next week's session where we'll talk about TensorFlow Lite. Take care, everyone, and goodbye.